the seventh turn. <laughs> yeah, in chapter 12, if you've been following along, uh, God gave Abraham a promise of many descendants. And at the end of that chapter, Abraham, Abraham actually, came up with a bright idea to solve a problem. And it didn't turn out so well. But in this chapter, it's now Sarah's turn to come up with a bright idea. <laughs> oh, let's see how this turns out, shall we? <laughs> Don't worry, there's some good lessons to learn. Uh, and all packed in. Enjoy. Okay, Enjoy. so this, this chapter um, is Sarai and Hagar. And yes. I have in parentheses at the top of the chapter, God hears. Mm -hmm. Something we see that God hears. So um, this is really an important member. Sarai hasn't has is hasn't had any babies yet. No. Okay, she has not had any babies, even though God has said, "I'm going to give you all your descendants are going to be in this land." Mm -hmm. Because numbers of the stars of the sky, and the dust of the earth, and she's still waiting to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. So let's read verse one. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maid whose name was Hagar. They all had mm. maids and concubines and things like that. So Sarai said to Abraham, Abram, he's not Abraham yet. <laughs> now, behold, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I will obtain children through her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai, not God. He didn't listen to the voice of God. God said, child will come through your loins who i will bless through your wife okay your, your descendants are going to be great he didn't wait on god he listened to his wife god did not say use a concubine use your maid to have a baby <laughs> all right so verse three after abram had lived 10 years on the land of canaan abram's wife sarai took hagar the egyptian her maid and gave her to her husband abram as his wife okay in other words they had sex he went into mm -hmm. Hagar, she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her sight. Now problems happened between the two women. Yes. Okay. And Sarai said to Abram, may the wrong done me be upon you. <laughs> I gave my maid into your arms. For when idea. You... <laughs> yeah, right. I gave my, he made me do it. I gave my maid into your arms. When she saw your arms, uh, I gave my maid into your arms, but when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her sight. She despised me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Mm -hmm. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your maid in your hand. is in your power. Do whatever good is in your sight. So Sarai treated her harshly, and the maid fled from her presence. She ran away. Now the angel of the Lord, first time this is mentioned in the Bible too, yeah. Found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. He said, Hag he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? He knew, of course. And she said, I am fleeing from my presence of my mistress, Sarai. I ran away. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. Moreover, the angel of the Lord said to her, I will greatly multiply your descendants. And so they will be too many to count. Okay. So, so God has given her a message too. Mm -hmm. That I'm going to multiply your descendants too. The angel of the Lord said to her further. Behold you are with child and you will be her son. And you shall call his name Ishmael. Which means God hears. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord has given heed to your affliction. He will be like a wild donkey of a man. <laughs> his hand will be against everyone. And everyone's hand will be against him. And he will live to the east to all his brothers. Okay. So he's given a word. She's given a word about Ishmael. But it all has to do with earthly things. Nothing about supernatural spiritual things. Yeah. Okay. Then she called them. And when he's born, you know, pretty much that's when that religion starts. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God who sees. Mm -hmm. The well of the living, the seeing God. Yeah. For she said, have I even remained alive after seeing him? 
Therefore, the well was called Ver Laha Roy, which means oh, that the well of the yeah. living, the God that sees. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Beherit. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the son Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar was born Ishmael to him. Mm. They did not wait for the, the they did not wait for the promise of God. Okay. Once she conceived, she hates her, right? <laughs> um God didn't want polygamy taking place, but he permitted it. Mm -hmm. They didn't approve it. Because the first Timothy 3 2 says you should have one wife. Yeah. The angel Lord finds her. The angel prophesied to Hagar, you know, about the name and the sex of the baby. First time the angel of the Lord is mentioned in Genesis, which is interesting. Ishmael means oh, yeah. God here. He prophesies he's going to be a wild donkey of a man. Oh, and the yeah. Lord recognizes that. Okay. Yeah. And God makes those, a covenant. Oh, yeah. And true. And for those who don't, who may not have guessed, Hagar came from Egypt. Hmm. Where did that come from? Exactly. Oh, yeah. The uh, people yes, that. That's exactly <laughs> true. He picked up Hagar when he came back from Egypt with all of his donkeys and women, and yes. he brought back Hagar. Yeah, from Egypt. Oh, Hagar! Yeah. I could understand her wanting to get away uh, from the yeah. uh, from the mistress because right. so hello, that wasn't what? good. I mean, Hagar. Can I just tell you this? Um, represented the old covenant. She does. Yeah, salvation by works, yep. man's planning. If Hagar's way, nothing had got in. It, Nothing. God had nothing to do with it. Sarai represents the new covenant, Jesus, because she's mm -hmm. going to bring forth, bring forth the new covenant. Okay, yep. salvation by faith. We are saved by faith through grace. It's not a gift. It's a gift of God, not of works, yep. so no man can boast. God's planning. Okay, if if God's Sarah's way, man has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Hagar's way, God has nothing to do with it. Sarah's way, man has nothing to do with it. Okay, when we take things in our own hands, we hinder the working of God sometimes. We have to be so careful that we don't say, okay, God, this is what we're going to do. Hmm. Like, I know my son one time went for, a, uh, he was a youth pastor. He went for a job at a church in Florida. And when he, when he, the Lord, the Lord, he kept calling me all weekend. And he goes, Jules crying. Jill's crying. I don't know if we belong here. I don't know if we belong here. And I said, I cannot help you with that decision. That's between you and your wife. Um, if he was going to become the youth pastor there. And I said, then the last time he called me, I said, listen, you and your wife are one. If your wife is getting this feeling toward this church, then you need to think about that because you're one. And he didn't take the job. And when he told the pastor, the pastor said to him, then get off my property now uh -oh. i flew you out here i expected you to take this job and then he, he talked to the youth pastor that was leaving and the youth pastor said well i didn't want to say anything to you but he tells god what he wants to do and asks god to make it happen instead of asking god what do you want to do mm. there's people like that 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 I don't know. seek god and ask god what do you want god doesn't matter what i want i've been <laughs> bought by the blood of Jesus, redeemed yeah. by his blood. I don't I don't belong to myself anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that the works of the flesh will always oppose the things of the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah. They're at enmity with each other. The the we, we want to try not to hinder the work of God. We don't we don't want to get our flesh involved. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. And when we get our flesh involved, we have the kind of problem in life that uh Sarah and Hagar had. Not that's which right. is actually it's unfortunate, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can understand. It's easy to understand, but unfortunately, this is what happened. I know. And, and Sarah probably didn't realize that if she gets pregnant, of course this young woman's going to look at this older woman yes. and say, what's your problem? Yes, exactly. You know? Yeah. And if I can just read this one last scripture, this Go is the it. principle between law and grace. It's Galatians 4, 21 to 31. It's really mm -hmm. important. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the bondwoman and one by the free woman. Okay. Hagar is the bondwoman. 
Sarah is the free woman. Yeah. But the son by the bond woman was born according to the flesh and the son yeah. of the free woman through the promise. This is allegorically speaking for these two women are two covenants, one from Mount Sinai, the law of Moses, bearing children who are to be slaves. She is Hagar. Now this is Hagar is Mount Sinai is in Arabia, corresponds to the present Jerusalem. Okay. Mm -hmm. But at this time, he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. But was what? But what does the scripture say? Cast out the bond servant and her son, yeah. for her son shall not be an heir to the son of the free woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is in the New Testament that was written too. That what I just told you about Hagar and Sarai. Oh yeah. They're, you know the, the two different covenants right here. We must always be careful when, like you know, like I don't know, you know, I'm not perfect, and sometimes I have these fleshly thoughts, oh, like. Yeah. Oh, well, look at that person, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. immediately yeah. stop and repent. Don't yeah. let the, don't let this, the, the flesh oppose the things of the spirit. In oh, your yeah. life. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's important because we all we're listen, the devil, you know, we don't, you know, the devil puts sin in our mind and it's not sin until we perform it. Oh, but yeah. he will put those thoughts in our mind and we've got to take them captive to the obedience of Christ yep. every day every day yeah. so this is a really interesting story the uh, this is you know i love the stories of abraham you know for the next how many chapters we i love genesis i think it's an, a fabulous amazing book yeah but right here it's talking about the old covenant and the new covenant and that's really important for us to understand oh, yeah. and trust in god yes and i think uh this chapter will end this makes, like i said a perfect bookend yes it is a perfect bookend you're right I do hope you folks have been enjoying these videos. Uh, Dean and I are definitely having fun uh, bringing them to you. Hey, love to know what you what your thoughts and and what you're looking forward to in the in the coming chapters. We got plenty more uh, to come. <laughs> hey, thank you for your time, and I invite you to subscribe and keep watching. Uh, there's more to come. Have a, have a blessed day. See you when I see you.